Welcome back to another session from the Air Users blog. And you may have seen my interview recently, and if you haven't, it's up on YouTube. And it's an interview with uh, Forty, the Grammy Award-winning producer. And I interviewed him at NAMM, and he talks about how much he uses Expand 2. In fact, it's his go-to instrument for when he's doing top tracks and top remixes. You know, often the free stuff is overlooked, and, you know, Expand 2 is a really cool plugin. And I want to show you some really cool tricks again today using Expand 2. And the trick I want to show you is that, you know, sometimes you've got an idea down and you want to then experiment with it and come up with new things. I want to show you how we're going to take one riff, just one single riff on one MIDI channel, and then by imaginatively using Expand 2, growing that riff to come up with a whole tune from that one riff. Nothing else. You're not going to play anything else in. I've got a simple four on the floor beat. I've got a vocal part and I've got that one riff. And as you listen, I think you'll be surprised at what you can do with just those basically four notes I'm going to play in. So here's the riff. It's very similar to a riff that's in a David Getter track that's uh, in the Billboard Top 100 at the moment, I think about number four or five. And uh, so there's the riff. And sometimes you start with a riff, you're in the studio and you come up with something like this and you think, what can I do with this now? Now let me show you some cool things. Why don't we add a bass in? So it's the same MIDI channel, channel one here, and it's coming in on the same version of Expand, same plugin. So it's one plugin, four instances within that plugin. And what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come to there, I'm going to down, we're going to pull this down. I'm using the Jupiter Unison bass, and I pulled it down by two octaves to make a bass sound here. And we're in mono as well. I want to be in mono so that when it plays, it doesn't play the whole chord like above. It just plays the mono notes. Now that sounds a bit odd to you at the moment, but bear with me. Let's play that in a loop. So come to your harp now, turn it on. If you want to, you can take the cutoff down a bit. How cool is that? And the riff's still there? So with the same riff now, again, just the same MIDI channel and the same riff, let's put in a third part and do the same kind of tricks again. So we're going to pull in this source stack. This has got some delay on it. And chorus. But we're going to add the arpeggiator again. This time I'm using these volume gates. Gives that kind of steppy pumping feeling. All from four notes. Let's pull that cut out a bit. The last thing I'll do as well then is I've, on the fourth part, I've loaded in a mono sign. And the reason I've loaded in a mono sign is because sine waves are fantastic for sub bass. If you really want to get some low sub in, then again, I'm copying the pattern from here, the synth bass. So I'm stacking that on top of that. So, and I'm using the same pattern, but this time I'm pulling it down to 36 uh, semitones, which is three octaves down to. big giant bass in there and put it all together add in a beat
add in a vocal. You might find the vocal fun. It was a bit of a joke, really, just to explain what this is all about. One thing and imagination can change the whole damn thing. One thing and imagination can change the whole damn thing. Just to remind you again. One thing and imagination can change the whole damn thing. So there we are, one thing in Expand. Some additional parts, some arpeggiating, some changing of the transpose, and you have quite an interesting track straight away for you to then work on and work up to a full song. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.